Hello again, Vinyl Community, Matt here. And tonight I have a video that I probably should have made a year or more ago <laughs> when uh, when I first started making videos. Actually, that's well over a year ago. And that is um, a music room tour. We're going to take a look at the setup. I've shown individual pieces of it before, but I've never shown you guys the whole thing. And I don't know, I just thought today's the day. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to go take a look at everything. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty small setup, um, certainly compared to what a lot of you guys have, but, uh, uh, yeah, let's, um, let's go take a look. So the setup is actually in the corner of our family room over there. It used to take up the entire wall, um, kind of behind me over here. You can see some of my daughter's <laughs> toys. Um, but uh, yeah, when my wife was pregnant last year, we uh, I, I <laughs> agreed to condense everything. Now, the reality is that it kind of hasn't been condensed. It just looks like it has. <laughs> well. It's been condensed in terms of the amount of space that it takes up, but in a way it hasn't because I have more records now than I did back then. But anyway, that's it over in the corner of the family room. And um, yeah, usually when I make the videos, I will either uh, sit on the couch, occasionally I will sit at the um, table in the dining room, um, which you just saw a minute ago. And most often, I will actually sit on the floor in front of the stereo right there. I mean, there's nowhere to sit right there except on the couch. So if I want to have the, if I want to have the stereo uh, set up, kind of in the shot, then I'll just sit on the floor right in front of the records and right in front of the stereo. So yeah, so that's it. We've got the shelves um, up there. Those those um, weren't there when I first started making videos. I added those a little later. And um, yeah, the, the pictures on the wall, those are all photos that I took at different places. There's actually uh, there's another one behind me and there's another one just off camera. Um, you probably recognize uh, this one where my finger's pointing. Um, anyone who's seen Forrest Gump will probably recognize that. <laughs> I, took, I took that in uh, Monument Valley, uh, which is, shoot, Utah, I think. <laughs> um, Okay, I think it is Utah. And uh, anyway, yeah, the other one, this one is in Nova Scotia, Canada. This one right here is Yosemite. Uh, but anyway, I know you guys, as much as you guys, I'm sure, uh, are really into the photography. I know we really want to see the setup. So let's go take a closer look at it. All right. So uh, I'm kind of <laughs> having to kneel down a little bit here. But um so uh, this is the uh, the first set of cubes. Actually, it's really two. Um, there's a six cube um, uh, unit right here. On top of that, I screwed a um, two cube unit just because I was running out of space for the records. So I added more. And the uh, the table right here. Well, I have my my retro clock. There you go. Ten forty p.m. in California. Um, I also have some books right here, including Andy's uh, Vinyl Dance Tales from the Dead Wax, and also including uh, a Beatles book, which I just picked up a couple of days ago in Savers. The uh, the records right here, these are all Beatles related. That's kind of for two reasons. Number one, the Beatles are my favorite band of all time, so I sort of wanted to have a, a separate special place for them. But honestly, the other reason is that I don't have room in the cubes for them anymore. <laughs> so by by separating them out, it gave me a little more a uh, little more wiggle room in the cubes. So these are all um, Beatles um, albums and also Beatles solo albums. So there's uh, uh, several Lennon albums, several McCartney uh, and Wings albums, um, one or two George Harrison's, one or two Ringo Starr's. I don't I don't have as many of them. 
and uh, yeah, so that's pretty much what's on the table here. Up here, uh, at the top of the cubes, those are the 45s. Um, I don't know how many I have. There's three of those boxes, which uh, we'll take a look at in just a second. Um, and then yeah, each of these uh, cubes holds probably uh, maybe 70 records, something like that. And I have, um, let's see, 14, uh, 14 cubes altogether, you know, 14 compartments. So that's already um, more than 800 records. <laughs> and that's, uh, yeah, that's not including the 45s either. So yeah, kind of crazy. But um, yeah, let's move on and see some more of the setup. Okay, so these are all the 45s. I have three of these crates of them. I don't know how many I have. I've never actually counted them. I would guess that there's a hundred or maybe more than a hundred in each uh, crate. So there's several hundred forty fives here. Uh, they're pretty full. There's probably room to add maybe ten to twenty more in each um, crate. And I can prove in the collection. I've already done that somewhat. I took out some records that didn't play too well. But yeah, there's always room to prove them a little bit more. And there's a little bit, bit of room on the sides too if I get desperate. <laughs> Uh, I always sleeve records, doesn't matter if it's a 45 or a 12 inch, um, with the, uh, with the, obviously the cover at the front, I always put the opening at the top, which isn't actually great for keeping the dust off, being honest, but it makes it so much easier to pull the records out. That's not an issue actually for the 45s, but, um, for the 33s, you know, if you've got a record sideways and you try to pull it out, chances are you're going to pull the sleeve out, a sleeve off and leave the record behind. And then at the back, I always put the, um, now in the case of the 45s, I just use a paper sleeve. I always put um, the record in the back. It's just for easier access. And I do that with the um, with the uh, 33s as well, with the 12 inch LPs and the 12 inch singles. I will uh, put them in an inner sleeve at the back. And it's just, well, there's more than one reason. One, it is easier to get at them, it's just easier access. But also, uh, uh, it, it helps preserve the sleeve longer. You don't have the rec record constantly bumping against the um, the spine of the sleeve. I also have a really weird way that I order these. <laughs> they are ordered A to Z, but A is on the right with A, B, C here. goes all the way to Z with Zoe in the last crate, Sunshine on a Rainy Day. Uh, I don't know why I do the same thing like I said with the LPs as well and I also go by the first name of the artist not the last name so Paul McCartney would be under P not under M uh, if it's if it's an artist or a band that starts with the or uh, maybe a ah I can't think of too many of those but um, like let's see the Rolling Stones well that would be under R that's not under T that's under R but for individual names it's always under the first uh, the first letter of the person's first name. Don't know why I, I thought about reorganizing it because sometimes even I find it crazy. I, but it would just be so many records to sort out that um, I just haven't got around to it yet, you know. Underneath the uh, boxes of 45s, these two top cubes are all my 12 inch singles. And these are really jam packed, I gotta be honest. Um, I have thought about, well, let me show you what I was talking about earlier, about, um, so we have the cover, and then inside the outer sleeve here, we have an inner sleeve, in this case it's a, a Disc Keeper 2.0 inner sleeve that I put at the back. Um, the plus side is it's really easy to get the records out, literally just this, and we're done. Uh, the downside is that I think, in theory, that I, these are taking up more room. And so I wondered about putting the records inside to try and free up some space because, you know, I mean, this wouldn't be as thick. <sighs> and I started to do it, and, and then I remembered one other reason, which is um, sometimes the uh, the outer sleeves can be real tight, like if it's a, a particularly thick um, album, if the, uh, if the cover, cover's really thick. And that's just gonna be such a hassle every single time because I like to record a lot of these to um, digital as well um, you know like mixes mostly for myself but like making mixes and stuff and it'd be really it's gonna be kind of an inconvenient and a hassle to 
I have to deal with the outer sleeve every time. But anyway, yeah, these are the 12, 12 inch singles. Um, again, A is on this side, on the right. Z is on the far side, on the left. Um, these records over here, this little stack, these are actually outside the cube. These are all records that in some way I haven't dealt with yet. <laughs> uh, in this case, they've all been cleaned. They just need, I just need to give most of them a listen and to then shelve them and I just haven't gotten around to it yet but uh, but I will sometimes there's more records in that I have another stack that need cleaning actually <laughs> um, some of the uh, some, most of them are finds from the record fair that I went to over the weekend um, if you guys are interested see my my previous video about that but uh, but yeah let's let's move on with the tour all right now I really am having to sit down <laughs> <laughs> so um uh this was these are the 12 inch uh singles that we were just looking at um there are six cubes here one two three four five six um there's another um unit of six cubes at the back that you can see there um and there's the uh the stereo setup we'll get to that in just a second and uh yeah again these are all ordered from uh a to z but backwards so the A's are over there on the right side, all the way over to, what's the last one? Oh, yeah, <laughs> ZZ Top Afterburner, all the way over to Z over here on the far left. Just my peculiar way of doing things. <laughs> um, we can't see it on camera, but we can if I turn it around just a little bit right here. Um, this is a big wall unit, well, it, it's up against the wall, it's not attached to the wall, but a big um, unit of CDs. It's got a lot of, a lot of, uh, <laughs> it's pretty big. <laughs> got a lot of shelves in it. Um, most of these are compilations. Um, for those of you who might have watched my channel for a while, you'll know that I'm really big into compilation albums, particularly British compilation albums. So the compilations actually go all the way down to here and just the bottom three shells have other CDs in them. So we have, I'll kind of take the camera here, okay. We've got, uh, these are just like 60s, 70s, there's some 80s albums um, right here. We've got um, Smash Hits albums, Greatest Hits of Telstar albums, Miscellaneous Dance albums, the Hits albums from the, mostly from the 80s, uh, we then move up to the Now That's Right Cool Music albums, which are on these top shelves here. Um, and then right at the top... Right at the top, those are my um, backup headphones. They're really cheap Sen uh, Sennheisers. I think they're... Uh, Sennheisers HG201. Yeah, HG these were dirt cheap. These were literally like 20 bucks. I think I got them from FYE uh, oh, a while ago, at least a couple of years ago. Um, I'm not crazy about them, I've got to be honest. Um, they're uh, the absolute lowest price and <laughs> that you can buy. They're, real, they're really budget. Uh, the plus side is they are comfortable. They also have a really long cord, which is good for TV watching. The negative side is... Um, uh, the bass response in particular is terrible. Uh, I, I've just, uh, you know, so I, I, I don't use them. Um, I use the newer headphones I got, which uh, you guys might have seen in one of my recent videos. I'll show those in a second. But, uh, oh, next to the CDs right here, we got this uh, very snazzy little briefcase thing that uh, Greg uh, Gregory Short uh, gave to me. And inside we have cassettes. And these are mostly 80s related cassettes right here. Not all of them, but most of them. So we've got, uh, oh, Tina Turner, Whitney Houston, Five Star, Miami Sound Machine, Sade, Fine Young Cannibal, Simply Red, Spandau Ballet, Human League, Tears for Fears, Melly Vanilli, <laughs> etc., etc. So, that's that. Let's, uh,. Let's take a look at the uh, at the speakers. So the speakers are um, Klipsch R15Ms. 
Um, I've been very happy with them. I used to have Kenwood floor speakers. They were these huge wooden things that sounded great. Um, but like I was saying, uh, when we found out uh, my wife was pregnant and I agreed to condense everything, the first thing really they had to go were the floor speakers. They took up a lot of space. So I got these um, uh, bookshelf speakers instead. They're obviously nowhere near as um, as powerful, but they still sound really good. And I got these on sale um, at the end of 2016, because my daughter's over a year old now. Um, they were half price at Best Buy, I think. Um, they were part of the um, Black Friday sales right after Thanksgiving. So yeah, yeah, that's right. They retailed at 250, and they were on sale for 125. And so I kind of pounced on on that. Now normally, normally I have the grills off. Let's see if I can pry this off real quick. I prefer the look of them with the grills off. But my daughter started to become a little bit interested in poking at these. And I'd rather she poke a hole in the fabric than poke a hole um, in any of the uh, the speaker parts, you know, the cone or whatever. Um, so, <laughs> so I put these back on. Um, yeah, which is fine. It doesn't it's not like it affects the sound or anything. But yeah, I, I've been very uh, very satisfied with these speakers. Um, they they've really been excellent. Uh, but although I I listen to at least half of my music wearing headphones anyway. So these are the headphones that I got recently, the um, Lexpro HAS 10s. Um, I've been extremely happy with these. They really sound terrific. They were very cheap. I think I paid 40 bucks for them, somewhere around that. And uh, yeah, like I said, like half the time that I'm listening to music, it's it's through headphones and not um, not through the speakers. And it's nice. Uh, my amp has an option to switch the, the uh, speakers off so I can listen without disturbing anyone <laughs> but uh yeah so speaking of the amp let's go and uh let's take a look at what you guys have probably been waiting for and that's the uh that's that's the equipment all right so i'm really having to get down here now starting from the bottom to the top and the reason i'm having to get down here is because right at the very bottom is my um a track deck that's it's a uh, realistic tr802 um, close to top of the line back in the day, back in like the late 70s. It has a, it has a lot of features, uh, including record, soft eject, it has dual VU meters, uh, right there, right there. Um, a bunch of like continuous play options. It also has Dolby, uh, which is um, very unusual on an 8-track deck. And it's good, it really sounds great. I, I haven't had any trouble with it whatsoever. Um, I think the seller had refurbished it, if I remember, but I bought it off eBay a couple of years ago, and, and yeah, I've been extremely satisfied with it. I don't listen to 8-tracks all that often, but occasionally, and they, they sound surprisingly good. Um, they really uh, they really do. Above that, we have a um, Techniques SH8055 graphic equalizer. Um, this is a wonderful, wonderful piece of equipment. Um, the difference it makes to sound, particularly tape, whether it's cassettes or 8-track, is just night and day. It's amazing. And honestly, I, I leave it switched on for vinyl and even CDs as well, because I, I just like um, I like the bass and treble boost that it gives. I mean, of course, you can configure it to, you know, to, to, to boost or to dampen any frequencies you want to, but... Um, I have the traditional kind of U-shape going on here, so it keeps the um, mids pretty much where they are. Very slight boost uh, to some of the mids, but the highs and the lows get a big boost. And uh, yeah, I, I just think it, it makes a big difference. And uh, moving up a little bit, above that, we have uh, one of my two cassette decks. Uh, this is a um, Pioneer CTF555. And uh, it's good. I mean, it, it, I got it because um, I was originally going for an all Pioneer setup. That later proved to be somewhat impractical, even though Pioneer, of course, made graphic equalizers. They even made 8-track decks, um, very good 8-track decks. But um, it, it proved impractical from kind of a cost standpoint and just a, 
a standpoint of, uh, especially when it came to the graphic equalizer, wanting it to do everything uh, or, or having it do everything that I wanted it to do. So as it turns out, um, three pieces of equipment in my setup are um, Pioneer. So the cassette deck, yeah, CTF uh, 555. It's a good deck. It's decent. Um, it it you know it's just a two head deck. Um, it does have four logic controls, so there are um, um, electronic uh, uh, buttons instead of the piano keys underneath. And yeah, it's you know it's all right. Has Dolby. Um, has support for metal tape as well, so that's that's good. Um, it is part of Pioneer's Flor Floroscan series, uh, their Blue Line series, um, in the very early 80s. So this came out somewhere between 1980 and 1982, I think. Um, and it has the uh, digital VU meters there, which is nice. Above that is the tuner. Um, that's the uh, TX610. I, I had to just double check it because I've been through so many tuners. Again, those of you who might have watched my channel for a while, well, no, I had an absolute nightmare. Um, actually, I had a nightmare with the cassette deck too, but the tuner was something else. Um, it took several eBay purchases before I finally got one that worked. And, uh, I've been happy with it. It's it's a little unique because the um, the signal strength indicator sits in the middle um, of the uh, uh, the frequency indicator, like which station you're on, it's, it's a little bit unusual, but uh, yeah, it's it's um, it's decent, you know, it works. So that's all that mattered. Um, above that, this is uh, my amp. It's a Pioneer SA510. I used to have an all Kenwood setup, and then I about uh, a year, a year and a few months ago, I switched over to Pioneer. Not that I dislike the Kenwood. In fact, in fact, the Kenwood sounded good, but it was getting real scratchy. I had tried to clean it; didn't make much difference, and um, uh, it probably needed more attention than and more um, more of a, a servicing than I was prepared to give it at the time. So I switched over to Pioneer and been very happy with it. Again, it's part of the Floro uh, the Floro Scan slash Blue Line series from Pioneer in the very early eighties. And uh, it's good. It has a, a, a tape loop, of course, which means I can output to a graphic equalizer and have the sound come back into the amp. And uh, actually, no, I'll show you guys. Let me do this. This is all uh, a little bit amateurish, so I apologize for the shaky camera here. But so here's the amp. Um, yeah, again, I've been extremely happy with it. Looks good. Sounds great. That's the most important thing, right? And uh, moving down. We can see the tape deck and the tuner right there. Here's the uh, graphic equalizer. It's not on right now. Actually, you know what? I'll turn it on. Uh, let me put the radio on I'll, and I'll turn the volume down. And uh, yeah, you can see the, uh, the spectrum analyzer part doing its thing. And here's our eight track deck. Realistic TR802, very nice. And yeah, I, I honestly, I have to be honest, this was part of the reason I wanted to get this particular graphic equalizer. I loved, I loved the the lights on it. Uh, completely honest, I did. I, I um, I, they're, they're kind of mesmerizing to look at. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, now let's have a look at the turntable. So, this is, um, Audio Technica ATLP 120 USB. A lot of people in the vinyl community have this turntable. Um, I love it. It's a terrific turntable. Um, I haven't I haven't made any changes to it except that I took out the um, felt slip mat and replaced it with a rubber mat. That's the only change. Um, it's direct drive. It's not automatic in any way. It's fully manual, so there's no auto return or auto start. You kind of got to do it all yourself. But the nice thing is that I will never have to change a belt on this. Um, it has quartz lock, so the speed is constant. And um, yeah, I mean, it, it's uh, it had, and again because it's belt drive, it starts and stops on a dime. You know, I don't know if the camera's picking that up too well, but um, and also the cartridge that comes with it, the AT ninety five E, is a very solid cartridge, very well regarded. Um, 
it's it's a it's a budget cartridge, but uh, it's pretty much top of the line as far as budget cartridges go. And uh, you know, and and with it being a, a full kind of, well, it claims it's a professional turntable. I don't know if I go that far, although you can use it for DJing. So I guess so. Um, we've got the full anti skate counterweight, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this particular cartridge tracks at two grams. Um, actually, I think the range is 1.5 to 2.5, but I found two to be right in the middle to be the sweet spot. And um, yeah, again, I've been super happy with it. It's uh, uh, it really sounds very good indeed. It really does. Now, uh, moving over here, um, we have <laughs> another tape deck. Um, yes <laughs> at the bottom here this is a denon drm 740 um it's a three head cassette deck you know what let me move around that's going to be a little bit easier uh it's a three head cassette deck so it sounds better particularly for um well it's, i was going to say it sounds better for recording it's easier to, to record with it than it is with the um pioneer two head deck simply because you can monitor the tape you can listen to the tape as you're recording um, this is, uh, I was going to say this is the, the newest uh, piece of equipment. That's not true, actually. The, the mini disc up here is newer, but, um, this is the second newest piece of equipment that I have. I bought this, uh, last summer, so it's been less than a year and it's good. Uh, I've been pretty happy with it. I'm not a hundred percent satisfied. I had to adjust the speed on it, which was a little disappointing given that, uh, it was supposed to be, uh, fully serviced you know new belts everything lubricated etc etc but um it does sound good i have to give it some credit it, it you know and it makes really nice recordings too um above that is the cd player that is the sony cdp 291 um i love this cd player it's old it's from like 91 or something 92 maybe uh, it doesn't have optical out but that's fine i honestly don't care too much about that and it really sounds good I, I used to before this i was using a sony dvd player which got the job done but it would sometimes take 20 seconds to start up a start up a disc because first it was trying to read a dvd then it would realize oh it's not a dvd let me try reading it as a cd and before you know it 20 seconds have passed and it finally started playing well i mean this thing starts up almost immediately which is what a cd player should do and yeah, I've been, uh, it was an eBay purchase. I've been very happy with it. It really sounds good. And then above above that, we have my mini disc uh, recorder, which is a uh, uh, Sony MDS GE520. Um, I did have a, shoot, what was it? A 320? I forget. <laughs> I think it was a 320. Um, and, um, you know, and, and I upgraded. I found a good deal for this on eBay. And again, been very, um, been very happy with it. So let's have a little bit of a closer look. We'll start off with the tape deck right here. There we go. Oh, and this is a switch box because my 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 amp, although it has quite a few inputs and outputs, it 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 doesn't have enough to have uh, like seven things hooked up to it. So uh, this switch box um, controls the. Uh, uh, mini disc, the second cassette deck, and also the VCR up here. Some of you guys might have seen my music on VHS video that I made several months ago. Um, honestly, I don't really use this, but I don't know. It does sound good, though. I have to admit, the audio sounds fantastic. But, uh, yeah, so the switch box um, doesn't control the CD player. The CD player comes directly off the amp. Um, but here's the... Uh, the CD player right there, and the mini disc up top. Sorry for the wonky camera work. Um, and sitting on top of the mini disc, we just have an assortment of. Uh, we have my Discman. We have uh, the Walkman that uh, Gregory Short gave me. I have another Walkman that's in the car, um, but this is the one that I take to work. This is a portable mini disc player in here. iPod, which I don't even use anymore. Um, there's a few mini discs here. Um, well, and several more recordable mini discs at the back right here. And uh, these are all <laughs> remote controls up here for various contraptions. And uh, these are a bunch more cassettes right here. 
a whole bunch of them. Uh, mostly rock. You know, we got like Rush, Dire Straits, Echo and the Bunnyman, Meatloaf, U2, Guns N' Roses, Tom Petty, etc., etc. Um, and even the ones at the bottom, it's still kind of mostly rock. Paul Simon, Grateful Dead, Matchbox 20, Elton John. Um, so, yeah, those are where all the uh, cassette decks live. There's the other speaker. And let me do this. And then the shelves. Um, I have eight tracks up here and eight tracks up here. Um, the, the sort of better eight tracks are uh, at the bottom. So we've got like my ACDC back in black. Five bucks, that was a great deal. Um, we got some disco stuff with like ABBA, War of the Worlds, the Beatles. Um, we've got a couple of Kiss ones, Dire Straits, the Eagles, Elton John. The ones at the top, actually I, I have a whole bunch of Simon and Garfunkels up here, which is kind of cool. Um, there's some disco stuff too, like Leo Sayer and the Spinners, Tavares, etc. Uh, and then CDs, there's some more CDs up here as well. These are kind of the better ones. Um, these are not compilations, these are just kind of the better CDs. CDs I might listen to more often. So we've got uh, um, the Beatles, the Red and Blue albums here. Pink Floyd, Simon and Garfunkel, U2, uh, Travis, Michael Jackson, Madonna. There's a bunch of Britpop here too. Oasis, Lush, uh, Blur, uh, Cast. So pretty cool. Uh, and then the ones at the top right here. And there's a few more cassettes you can see at the end here and at the top as well. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. That's, that's the whole that's the whole deal right here. Right here in this corner. That's where it all happens pretty much. Um, oh, I, shoved, I, I had to move the coffee table back so I could get in there. But uh, yeah, oh, oh, one more thing. The um, uh, underneath the coffee table, right here, these are all bins. Um, these are uh, these two bins have CDs in them. Uh, these two bins have cassettes in them. And this little bin has uh, miscellaneous stuff in it, pretty much. And uh, yeah, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. <laughs> um, I didn't used to have the bins. I, the, I used to have them in like boxes, like little crate things. Um, but my daughter kept, daughter kept coming in here and pulling the CDs out. So this was kind of a precaution. But I do use a stair gate right here. It's not set up right now. but um, And there's one over there too. Because otherwise she would be in here. And, and to her credit, she doesn't usually now try to come in here. Unless I'm in here and she's not. In which case she starts kind of fussing. Um... But when she's older, I would definitely like her to, to be able to come in here. We'll listen to music together, which would be cool. But like I said, she's a year old right now. She's um, she's not quite ready for that. <laughs> not ready for that sort of responsibility. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, I think that's everything. So I, I'd love to know um, the type of uh, uh, audio setup, what kind of equipment you guys are using. Uh, you know, this is, um, this is kind of a... I would say a mid-range setup. It's certainly not high-end by any means, but um, equally, I'm aware that it's not uh, uh, not the cheapest either. So um, I, I'd love to know what you guys are using. And uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I wanted I wanted a silver setup, but the reason I had the black setup behind me is because I wanted a CD player and. It's extremely difficult to find a CD player that is silver, at least at least for one that's cheap. So uh, I was like, you know what? I can live with having the black. It's fine because it's kind of separate from the silver stuff. Um, that's why I got the silver Audio Tenica turntable too. It's just to kind of match everything. But but yeah. Anyway, I digress. Um, so yeah, I'd love to know what, what kind of sub you guys have and. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Appreciate all your comments. Appreciate everybody who has subscribed. And until next time, bye-bye.